Hi, good morning, sir. Good morning, viewers. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, click the bell. So, today I'm here to talk about Mino and how it was probably influenced by the pre Socratics. So, first thing I want to discuss is one of the pre Socratics, Thales. Uh, with Thales, he answered a question, a question we do not know, but his answer was water. His probable question was, what was the earth or the world probably made of? And his answer was water. And this is very interesting because he started a series of questions that will lead us to the philosophy we have today. And I'll show how it will lead maybe to Socrates and Mino. So what Thales asked was probably what the world was made of or what was the first stuff or the primary stuff that made up the world. And his answer was water. And I want to point out the curious curiosity of Thales and how it led him to philosophize and to come up with an answer of water. Um, probably his answer was wrong, but his first step in questioning the world, the reality, and trying from his observations, coming up with insights and questions, I think this helped him uh, lead to uh, this idea of water, which was further developed by the other philosophers. So, now we enter Mino. Um, in the first, um, first few pages of Mino, in page 111, um, Socrates asks a similar question, but a bit more specific. Uh, so he asks Mino, what do you yourself say virtue is? So Mino came first and asked, and para nagmayabang siya kay Socrates na, Marami siyang alam sa virtue, nagtotok siya, marami nagpapabayit sa kanya. So, Socrates asked, what do you yourself say what virtue is? So, I want to pay attention na Socrates asked a seemingly harmless question, but he is also along the lines of thought of Thales, of asking what the reality is. And you will see later in Mino that uh, Socrates really wants to know the truth of reality. Even if it's just about virtue, he tries to find out the reality of things. And so we'll see later in Mino that uh, Socrates will try to develop the idea, try to critique it, try to ask questions, clarify, contradict if he thinks it's wrong. And I think these instincts he got from the pre-Socratics like Thales. After Thales, there was um, Anaximander and Anaximenes who both thought about what the material, uh, uh, what the material stuff of the universe is. One said it was a boundless substance. One said it was air. Um, but both of them tried to discuss what was the reality of um, the universe, at least the material makeup. But for Socrates now, he's asking, it's not a material, eh? he's asking something um, a bit more spiritual, more metaphysical, virtue. So which is really hard to define, which is why this uh, discussion, dialogue is really interesting. So Mino, being a bit mayabang, he says, oh, I know what virtue is. For man, it's his capacity to lead the city's affairs. For woman, its capacity to, its ability to lead the household. And then he says it's different for young and the old, the slave, the free. And then Socrates tries to clarify even further. He says, no, he's looking for one, one example, uh, one meaning and not examples. So here, at least here, we're going back to what I said earlier that Socrates is trying to look to the reality of things. The reality behind the examples of virtue, Mino said, he's trying to see, okay, so there's something behind the examples. What is it? What is it? So I want to point out Socrates has this thirst for truth, a truth not easily grasped, and a truth na minsan may no offend, may na sa kanya. But this thirst for truth is 
what he shared the most with the pre-Socratics is curiosity for truth. More than more than um, what the pre-Socratics said, like Thales, the water, I think the more important thing Socrates gets from these is the questions and the persistency in asking these questions and finding the answers. That's what I think Socrates is really good at and really brings to the table here in Mino. So the discussion goes na, is justice a virtue? Is it one of the virtues, like an example earlier? Or is it virtue itself? Um, so they don't know how to go about that. So Socrates tries another avenue to explain how he is asking a question. So he says, okay, how about roundness? Is roundness a shape? It's not an example of a shape, but it's a bit beyond shapes. Persimino, trying to evade the question of virtue, asks Socrates, what is, um, what is a shape? So Socrates naman, uh, wants to answer, pero medyo naiis din siya na Mino doesn't want to give him the definition of virtue. So, um, he makes a deal with Mino. Uh, Mino says, okay, if you give me a definition of a shape, I will give you a definition of a virtue. That's page 113, 114 pala. Uh, ay, hindi ko pala So yung uh, Thales talking about uh, water as the source of everything is page 29. Um, ayun. And then, so back to the shape and definition of a shape. So Socrates first asks, okay, uh, do you believe this is the definition of a solid? Do you believe this is the definition of a limit or boundary? And then he says, okay, a shape is the, the limit of a solid. And then, yun. And then si Mino naman, uh, medyo uh, magaling siya eh. He asks naman, okay, so anong definition naman ng color? Socrates medyo nainis na kasi paligoy-ligoy si Mino when he wants just a straight answer what is virtue. So per si Socrates naman, cooperative, he answers. He cites Pindar who I don't know but Pindar somehow says it, concept of effervescence. So the color daw for Socrates is the effervescence from a shape and something that's sensible, perceptible to the eye. And then yun. And then now, Simino finally gives an answer. What is virtue? So virtue thou for Mino is desiring fine things and having the ability to acquire them. So si Socrates, um, bilang um, someone na uh, able to see beyond answers, he asks, okay, so what if I do get wealth, I do to get health, but I do it without justice, like my deny ako or my na harm ako in the process. But so without justice, is that virtue? No. So there must be something wrong with the answer. And I want to point out na si Socrates sees beyond the examples and sees, is trying to find the reality behind the examples. So um, this idea of looking for a structure behind reality is very much close to Heraclitus and his concept of the Logos. So see Heraclitus, page 40, I think that's fragment 1, um, or those fragments on Logos. Um, uh, Heraclitus sees that there's an underlying structure to a changing reality. So Heraclitus um, says that change is constant, like you never step in the same river twice, which I don't know the page. Um, but he does admit there's change, but behind that change, there's an underlying structure and order reality he calls logos. In the Greek, that's a very rich word, logos, which means the summary, teaching, reason, order, um, parang a logical order. Um, and that's hidden behind the changing reality. And I think Socrates is seeing that and trying to hint towards that with this question of virtue na, what is this unchanging reality uh, despite the changing different examples that, of virtue that he sees? Um, so the question goes further, page 118. Um, Socrates says, justice must be part of the definition of virtue because if you remove it, there's no more virtue. And it seems to also contradict uh, Mino's example or definition of virtue. So... 
Um, virtue daw is adding uh, a part of virtue, let's say justice, to an act. That makes it virtuous. Kasi pag tinanggal mo, um, wala din. And then, medyo nainis na si Mino at this point. But uh, Socrates clarifies in page 120 na he's only trying to um, he's only trying to share his perplexity about the subject. His goal is not to demean or to make people feel stupid, but his goal is just to help relieve his perplexity. And means and nasasama din yung balik si Mino. And then, dal confused yung dalawa, uh, nainis si Mino. Um, and then, me, we enter a part um, of Mino, a certain paradox of how do you search for something you don't know? This is page 120. So, how do you find something that you don't know what you're looking for? Paano mo, like, example, paano mahanap sa SM North ang isang taong di mo alam yung itsura? You, ca- you don't know. It's really hard. Um, and then, Socrates also adds, you probably won't search for something if you already know it. So you won't search for a certain knowledge if you already knew it. Um, so how do you reconcile um, these two? So Socrates came up with a solution um, in page 121. So his idea was um, the concept of recollection. So yung argument niya, a soul thou is immortal. And if it's immortal, it probably um, lived multiple lives before the present moment. And if it lived multiple lives before, it's not surprising if it can recall knowledge from the previous lives. Um, so, humingi ata si Mino ng example. And then, si Socrates, in page 121, he called a uh, slave boy. And this is six pages of question ask geometry, 121 to 127. Pero basically, na kuha ni Socrates. He made the slave boy um, find the area of a square that's twice the original area. Or basta na-prove niya in some point. And yung interesting dito, the slave boy wasn't taught geometry. Um, and nung they checked this um, investigation. So basta the slave boy proved that um, uh, the area of a square and a square two times is not, is not the twice of the side. Um, you have to see it for yourself, that example. So, pero nang prove nila after na all the knowledge of the slave boy is his. And na prove na he did not know this knowledge before kasi wala naman nagturo and lumaki daw sa household ni Mino tong slave boy na to. And yung questioning ni Socrates brought out the spontaneous recovery of the recollection knowledge of the slave boy. So, the, I think, and then the next section is is virtue taught or a gift of nature? So this whole section um, describes um, where does virtue come from? Is it knowledge? Is it equal to knowledge? Um, is it advantageous? Does it make us good? That's page 129. Um, so in 130, they noticed that the right use of virtue um, is advantageous. If you don't have virtue, it becomes harmful. And para na notice nila, if you add the spiritual qualities of temperance, justice, courage, courageousness, quickness of mind, nobility. Yung quickness of mind kaya wit ba yun? Um, kung nakakatawa. <laughs> uh, in page 130, they notice if you're confident without reason, it brings people to harm or yourself to harm. If you're reasonably confident, it brings you profit. Wisdom leads to happiness, folly leads to harm. Um, uh, to be wise is to use your mind rightly. To be foolish is to use your mind wrongly. So yung flow na naisip na, if you have wisdom, it brings spiritual character and it brings non-spiritual characteristics that brings good. It's part of that order. Yung non, uh, good of non-spiritual characteristics comes from a good spiritual character which comes from wisdom. And then yung uh, conclusion nila sa page 132 is that if you have wisdom and virtue, it's advantageous. 
And I kind of don't get their argument here na uh, why they concluded na good men does not come from nature. Um, but anyway, in page 132, they brought a new guy to the scene called Enitus. So, in their discussion, um, you kind of want to learn from an expert. Uh, if you want to learn something, like to be a shoemaker, you have to learn from an uh, expert shoemaker. I think that's page 132. And then they discuss the problem of sophists in 133. So in sophists though, they teach anything or teach a lot of things and they charge a lot of things. But it seems that they don't know what they're teaching or they don't know a lot. A lot. And in 134, si Anitus even said that the teachings of Athenians are probably uh, better for you than the teachings of sophists. And then the discussion goes, so we're still in the question of is this virtue can virtue be taught so they found this guy a very virtuous guy socrates said Themistocles, who's probably who's a very good person um and he assumed he's probably a good teacher 134 and then in 135 they said okay may anak siya si cleophantes and then si cleophantes daw trinain siya ng tatay niya very well in horse riding and socrates assumed na the father wants to teach him well. He gave him the best uh, training and education possible. And probably the father also taught him virtue. And if the father wanted to teach him virtue, probably Cleophantes was a good virtuous person then. Pero hindi daw. Hindi siya ganun ka good katulad ng tatay niya. Uh, and therefore, in page 137, Socrates concluded na, okay, since Cleophantes isn't that good, maybe virtue cannot be taught. Because he had the best guy, and then di niya natura anak niya. And then, so the question of, can you produce good men? Tanong ni Mino. So, page 137. And in page 138, um, you have this uh, concept of guides na a person who knows just a bit, pero okay yung alam niya, called true opinion, can lead the person to the right place. But also a person of, who has knowledge, who will still lead the people to the right place. Um, they're both good. Good guides daw yung tawag sa kanila. Um, pero, advantages daw yung my knowledge. So, who knows the path going to the right place, it's more advantageous. Kasi yung person of right opinion or true opinion, um, minsan nawawala daw yung opinion niya na good. It has to be tied daw by reason. Um, or else, your true opinion will run away. Sabi niya, page 139. So, and then I also don't get um, how they concluded here. Pero 139 says na, good men are good by, are not good by nature. Um, and therefore, so page 140, sa tayo, sabi ni Mino, virtue can't be taught. Therefore, virtue is not knowledge. Because I think for them, knowledge can be taught, but virtue is not. Therefore, Virtue is not knowledge. So they're now in a difficult position. What is virtue? Um, or can virtue be taught? So the, and then I think they're trying to ask the question of where does virtue come from? I think um, page 140 to the ending, they finally somehow thought of it coming from the divine. So they said the men of position are like prophets, oracles, and Probably, they got things from divine inspiration. And women even call men, good men, divine. So, sabi ni Socrates yun. So, I think, um, naging conclusion nila, and this is in the last page, 141. Virtue is neither nature nor thought, and it's, uh, you get it from divine inspiration. And the last thing I want to conclude is, um, si Socrates siguro, was more influenced by the curiosity, persistence of the pre-Socratics in finding out the nature of the universe, finding out what's real, what's truthful, what's not truthful, asking questions from teachers, asking questions from other people, uh, to other people, and then getting their insights, giving your insights. Pero yung discussion is leading towards a certain truth. And... That's what the pre-Socratics and, the Socr and Socrates shared. And that's what came out in Mino. More than, for me, um, 
uh, the different ideas like water or boundless or air um, make up of the universe or logos. I think it's the questioning of the pre-Socratics that was shared by Socrates. And I think, um, just to apply it to me a bit, I should probably take that position of understanding before speaking, understanding things in class, before accepting them as truth. This critical mindset, I, should, I think I should probably bring into philosophy and hopefully use it for priesthood if God calls me. Ayun, thank you. This is Sid Azcaraga from D3 San Carlos. Thank you, Sir Calano. See you next time.